Hey guys and gals, welcome to Sweet Project Cars, a cool trick and affordable ways for the do-it-yourselfer and simple ways. Today we're going to finish up some of the stuff on the trailer here. As you can see, we got this one all done up here, got the new jack on this side. Now we're going to put the cross members in that were there that had the original uh, jack on it. And it has the hole in both of the pieces where the uh, actual wiring harness went through for the trailer to plug into the vehicle. So, uh, this one, we tried to heat it up and bend it back and that was a complete failure. Not good. But uh, we're going to set it up so we can mount this box back on, which is the brake, electric brake part emergency brake part and that bracket is right here and it has two bolts in it we're deciphering if we want to weld the bolts back new bolts back on or just use self-tapping screws which is maybe what we'll end up doing that's a lot easier to do and uh, we have some much heavier duty angle iron which will definitely stiffen up the a-arm part of the uh, trailer and make it tougher so let's get busy oh and by the way for those of you that asked for the Harris bottles that we gave away uh, I think some of you are pretty surprised what you actually received in the mail if you liked what you received comment on any of the uh, videos and let us know what you thought of that we're very thankful for all of you being here with us. So let's get cracking, stacking, and racking, and hacking. Oh, and wait till you find out about our new channel we're going to be launching. You're going to love it. GoPro, stop recording. All right, we're going to get a rough length on this, which is 18 inches on the first one. And this is the one that has the bolts in it. And the best way to do that is to cut from each edge in because it takes too long to try to cut across this way. So cut from the one edge down and the other edge down. And the best way to line that up after you've done it is to stand with your uh, blade and line it right up with the close one eye and you can get it dead perfect. There's our first one, right there. Got some burrs on it, but we gotta clean all the rust off so we can weld it. But let's see what it looks like over there right now.
Nice. All we're gonna do is clean it up, drill a hole for the wire to go through right here. All right, here's what we've got. This is a square corner right here, right there. I can get that up there for you. That's a square corner, same with this end here. But as you know, in the channel here on this, up under here is a pretty good radius where this piece and this piece meet up. We need to round that off so that this part here will come up flush. We want that. Right now I can't get this piece up to that part. I can do that. And they didn't have it that way. They had it so it was down and they welded it from the inside. But I want to put a weld across here and here to really make it strong. So we're going to round these edges off right here. And we'll probably just use the uh, bench grinder in there. Or we could clamp it down and use the... Uh, hand Milwaukee grinder, which I think that's what we'll do. You know, I'm not going to delete that out of there. One of these days, we're going to do videos that we don't do any editing on. You're going to see the goods and the bads, which happens to everybody. Uh, what I'm going to do is have the magic marker here so that I can mark where I need to grind. Because one thing you don't need to do is grind any more areas that need to be welded than you have to. Let's see if that worked. It did. It's a lot tighter up there now. All we got to do is take a little bit more off it and uh, do this one over here. And I'm going to mark it now. Well, I got it. See what I have to grind. Basically, there. There's the bird. Hi, hey bird. We call Lily the bird because she wakes up in the morning and goes like she thinks she's a bird. Anyhow, back to the project here. <laughs> So we'll do this side. that did. Sorry for reaching in front of you here. Much better. I could use a C-clamp, but I don't want to. So I'm going to grind those up now, weld it in. Where the welds are going to go so i'll get that ground up and i'll be right back gopro stopped recording all right what i did was i laid the bracket in there i got it ground down now let me show you what i got here so now it fits up there nice and tight and i have a nice gap to put a good bead of weld here i'm going to grind this edge here down to bare metal and this edge. I marked both sides of the marker so I wouldn't grind 
in areas that I didn't need to grind. And I realized I only need one of these. I don't need to put the other one in here due to the fact that they had these mainly for the mounting of the emergency brake and the other jack that we had to cut out of here. Because they had the jack here between the two pieces of uh, angle iron. So I only need one and since this is twice the thickness almost of what I had before I welded it all right I welded it see I can't even say it when I try to do it the second time right I ground it inside there just in case I want to weld it in there but if I weld it up here and maybe spot weld it on there real good it'll be strong but basically like I said the only reason they had those two brackets here was for the the jack that they had between the two and now we've got this one here, and we'll have one here. We'll be strong and solid, but that piece of steel is going to be good. So let's get it set up to weld. All right, so this is the piece that we had. It has the hole in it right there. And that's an inch and a half down by an inch and a half in to the center of the hole. So we can't really lay it over it because of the webbing. It'll move us in the wrong spot. So we're going to So right there is where it's, that's where it's got to be. So we're going to drill the hole in it. Now it'll be a lot easier to do that. with it not welded in. It's got to go right there. All right, we've got our two drill bits. We've got our handy dandy Milwaukee. We are going to, and when you, if we were really needing this to be exact, within a hundred thousandths or fifty thousandths or what have you, we would center punch that right there, but there's, it doesn't have to be that exact. And when you drill a bigger hole like this, it's always best to use a smaller drill bit. And you can go as small as you want and keep working your way up. It just makes it easier. And when you hear the tone of the drill bit, and I know a lot of you guys already know this, but this is for people that don't know. When you hear the tone of the drill bit and the machine that you're using changing, that means you're getting ready to break through. So then you want to lessen the pressure so it doesn't grab on you. And put it on high speed and slowly go through and break the backside out. Like there, I just heard it, so now I'm going to go slow. Like that. Pretty close. Close enough for rocket science. Remember, small drill bits, faster speed. Bigger drill bits, slower speed. All right, we're gonna turn it over and go from the other side. Cause I know when that grabs, breaks through, it's gonna rip my arm off. And you can put it in your drill press, which I know you all have. I'm 
barely even setting it setting it in there on high speed just to slowly work my way down through it all right let's take the burrs off all right she's ready to go in gonna go right there it's gonna be beautiful it's a beautiful thing all right I'm gonna go get a new battery and I'll be right back all right we've got our nice little hole there for the loom to go through and we're going to use self tappers in this and I think that'll work the best so now all we got to do is get it square in here so we got a perfect triangle and I'll eyeball it first then measure it. All right, we're using some heavier rod because we have heavier steel and we're using the same red welder from the first video. All the tools, Julio, tell everybody where all the tools will be located. Buscar en el show más de la descripción de video para todas las herramientas. Thank you, Julio Cesar Chavez Rodriguez, Jorge Johnson Thompson. Anyhow, he changes his name all the time. But anyhow, this is the gig. The video for the first part of the trailer where we did all this stuff here is in the description as well. So go to the tools description, the video's description for all the tools and pertinent videos. Now we're using standard 120 volt, 110 volt house voltage for this welder and we're going to run it at about 200 or so. We have our favorite gloves and our favorite solar powered auto darkening helmet. Best one we found for the money. Guaranteed. Alright, let's get cracking. So if you're welding, say, quarter inch to quarter inch steel, just go to the description. You'll have the right rod that you need to use and the uh, pertinent information for that. We have a short stick in there. We're going to tack weld this and uh, <coughs> move over to this side and tack weld that. You never want to fully weld one side or the other because it'll warp it. Then you got to try to get that back up there. Excuse me. <coughs> Too many cohibas. Nice. Now we'll do this side over here and then move the clamp to this side. All right, nice weld. Get rid of that thing. And take this clamp off here. Oh, we welded the clamp on. I'm just kidding. Move the ground over here. Now I'm not going to come over and move the camera and do all that stuff around. I'm just going to do it from where I'm at because all I have to do is tack it. I'll try to stay out of your way. The idea of arc welding is to weld with an arc, not touching the rod to it. Alright, she's tacked up. Now I can take the clamp off. But it looks real good. It looks like a perfect triangle. Everything looks good. We measured it out right on. 
Now you can weld coming back, you can weld going forward. It just depends how you want to do it. Not bag. Did I just say not bag? Do you wonder wonder why they drag it across there? That's how you get the end of the rod to finally start making this deal happen. Well, we got it done. Uh, we have one more jack to put on the other side and we're going to cut the pad off the bottom so we can put a double wheel on it that way when we get to a place we need to be to move the trailer the bracket worked perfect the welds came out good it's solid it's not going anywhere that's for darn sure and what I did was I used a self tapping screw through here instead of welding the bolts on it and of course you can't get a drill gun in there very well but I got it just in there and I got the screw started drilled the hole with it went in about three or four threads pulled it out and then when I put the box up there I just used a small quarter inch ratchet and ratcheted them the rest of the way in but these are some of the handiest you could have when you're messing around with cars and what have you because they're just so versatile and they're strong get good ones don't buy cheap ones um, and I know many of you are wondering why I was using this little cheap tape measure but my daughter got me this when she was about five years old I think for my birthday that and a really cheap nut driver and uh I've kept this thing and I use it because now she's 30 so kind of makes you think back